Topaz have done it again. There's a new update. This is version 0.8, now with raw adjustments. What's that all about? Coming up on today's edition of The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Yeah, this is version 0.8, and Topaz has brought raw adjustments to Photo AI. Now, do we need them or do we not need them? And it really comes down to your workflow. What type of a workflow are you using? By the way, if you don't have all three of Topaz's great AI products, Sharpen AI, Denoise AI, and Gigapixel AI, that's called the Image Quality Bundle, and that gives you a total savings of $59.98 off of all those products, you know, combined. Now, they no longer, Topaz no longer give out promo codes. That's a real bummer, and I have nothing to do with that. But if you'll still use my affiliate links, I make a small commission when you purchase Topaz products, and it helps me to keep these tutorials coming your way. And I want to thank you for doing that. Even if you only own one part of the image quality bundle and you want to complete it, go to this link and you'll get extra savings off the two products you need to fulfill that image quality bundle. It's a good savings and that's a good tip for you. And that holds true for license renewals. You also get an extra savings on license renewals, I'm pretty sure, but check that out. I'll also link this product release page in the description below the video. This is where you'll see all the new changes made in this new version point eight. There's also a link to download Photo AI right here on this page. Now let's check out version point eight. I'm right here in Lightroom. What I would do is just right click here and go show in Finder. I think this will work on Windows as well as Mac. If you know for sure, please comment in the comment section below. That'll be very helpful. I'm just gonna right click on my image and open with Photo AI. It'll launch Photo AI and we'll get started. Now this will be a raw file coming in here and right now it's running its adjustments. It's scanning the image, checking it out, seeing if it has a sharpening problem, a noise problem or both and hopefully it'll get it right. But you can see all the settings it has found for us here. But you're going to notice now we have this new raw adjustments. Now we're going to check this out. Is this perfect? Absolutely not. There are bugs in here. I got, and I'm going to show this to you. I'm not, I'm not going to hold anything back from you. You're going to know the truth. Don't forget this is beta. It is coming out soon. So I'm a little bit worried. Are they going to get these problems taken care of before the launch date? I mean, they, in my opinion, need to. I wouldn't bring this out unless it's really working well. Let me know what you think in the uh, comment section below. Are they ready for this update? Do you think they'll be ready? I'm not so sure, but let me know your thoughts. And along those lines, I prepared a downloadable PDF that'll be linked in the description showing you my observations with this new update. I'm calling it the good and the bad. It's going to show you a bunch of stuff here. Do yourself a favor and download this. And I even have some final thoughts about the whole deal here. So check that out. Download it, read it over, and then give me a comment in the comment section below and let me know your thoughts. Now I have a question for you. Do you think this is the future of Topaz? Do you think this is going to take the place of the other three apps, Sharpen, Denoise, and Gigapixel? I kind of believe it, but let me know what you think. Comment below. Autopilot comes on by default. Subject is detected, no faces. Image contains raw data. Subject is in focus. Image noise level is medium. If I hover over subject detected, you can see the B is selected. It's kind of hard to tell in the red overlay. It'd be nice if they let us change that to a different color which would be very helpful. And also we need brush masking now. I know they'll bring brush masking out, but will it be out for the release? It has to. I mean, why bring a release out without brush masking? We need it. We can't always rely on AI, but now let's jump into raw adjustments because this is the new big update here in this version 0.8. So let's turn it on and you can see we have brightness, contrast, shadow, highlight, black level, white level, temperature, tint, and saturation. That's all very good. Now, I want to say something right now. If you do Lightroom, ACR, or say like Affinity Photo, and you like to do your raw processing in those products, this is not for you. But if you'd like to get your images off to a good start and then send them into one of those programs, then this would be something you would really enjoy. I want to change the subject for one minute. 
I told you in previous tutorials that you had to change RAW files to DNGs in order to keep your camera profiles, your Adobe profiles, and linear profiles. That's no longer the case. That has been fixed. You can now process RAW files in here. And when you return that RAW file back to your editing software, your profiles should all be intact. I'm sure that'll make a lot of you out there happy. Now back to the tutorial. Let's play with the raw adjustments. Say we want this image brighter. I'm going to take this slider and drag it to the right. And I'm going to wait. See initialize. We're going to wait. And 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 now we can see it's brighter. But what if it's? I say it's too bright? Well, let's bump it back a little bit. So let's bump it back. And let's wait and wait and wait and wait and now we can see the change to me this has got to be fixed again before this product is released here is a workaround we're zoomed in at 100 percent. this is not a good workaround but it is a workaround change this zoom level to either 200 or 400 i'm going to change it to 400 percent and just show you if i adjust this it's almost super fast okay I don't know where the problem is. It might be they may have to reduce the preview size or something like that or the, I don't know. I don't know what it takes. I'm not a software engineer, but they've got to fix this. If we go to 200%, you can see it won't be quite as fast, but it will still be faster. But the problem comes in where you need to really see a lot of the image if you're going to be making these kind of adjustments, especially in the beginning of a workflow. So that is something that has to be fixed. This is a beta, but I sure hope they get it fixed in time for the release in September. That is coming really soon. But if you do a Lightroom or ACR, Affinity Photo type of a workflow where you do your raw adjustments in there, then just disregard these raw adjustments. You won't be using them. Let me zoom in to 400% again, so this will be faster. And let's just go up on the B here. But, you know, I'm so close, it's really hard to make an adjustment. But we can see, we can adjust the black level, make the blacks darker. We can adjust the white level. We can change the temperature. We can warm it up. We can cool it down. We can adjust the tint, make it more magenta or more green. So we can do all those things. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and shut these off, but that's raw adjustments. But for my workflow, I won't need them. Here's a question for you. With these raw adjustments now in Photo AI, do you think the future of Topaz is to bring out a full editing solution, say like On One Software or Luminar Neo? Do you think they're going in that direction? I think they may be, but I don't know. Let's get a discussion going. What do you think? I really want to know your opinions on this. Now, here's something new in version 8. You see down here where it says 1%. This is a score of this image, how well Photo AI thinks the image has been improved so far. So it's at 1%. If I were to come here, it says I don't need sharpening. It's in focus. But if I go ahead and turn sharpening on, and it's selecting the subject only, you notice that bumped up to 11%. Now it's telling me I have a, an 11% better image at this point. Let's see what happens if I increase this strength and see if that score jumps up. I don't know. It may or it may not. Hey, it jumped up to 16%. Let's see what happens if I take it up to 100%. Is that going to increase or should it decrease? It went up to 23%. So it says, hey, you're doing the right thing. Let's try motion blur and see if there's a bigger increase there. Now I'm way at 100%, which is way too much. but now it's still at 23%. Now let's pull it back. And you can see that looked terrible, right? But I'm going to pull it back here to 57%. And now it has a 9% increase. So that's a score. So I don't know much about it, but this is new. And if we look at the release notes, it says we're also filling out a new feature related to image quality. And I believe that's what I was showing you. Images will be shown an image quality score with a percentage that presents how much your image improved. This is a very experimental score. So please give us your feedback on both how accurate and how helpful it is to you. So, hey, let Topaz know what you think. Remember, this page is linked in the description below this video. Now log into your Topaz account and you'll be able to reply to this, and you'll be able to look and see what all the other Topaz users are saying about this version here. And you'll be able to come right, uh, right here where it says reply, click reply, and go ahead and 
comment and let Topaz know. Give them your feedback. This is how they make this product better. It's very important that we do that because we are the users and we have things that we want and things that we don't like and they need to know that. I'll also link you to this community forum where you could get all kind of information on product releases, different discussions on different things, education and training, general discussions. So again, get involved. Click on that link. Now you know about the new raw adjustments and let me go ahead and reset this back to autopilot settings. And I really think this image needs sharpened. So let me go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna click right here and turn sharpening on and give it a second to update here. Now I'm at 100%, so it's a little slower at 100%. But again, if you bump up the zoom size, it'll be quicker. And that looks pretty good. And that's saying it has a lens blur. We could change it to motion blur. Let's do that just to see if there's any improvement on that. I always like to check both of these out and give it that little bit of time to update. Hopefully this will get faster as they improve this product. And again, it's still in beta. No, that doesn't look as good. So let's go back to lens blur. And I think we're going to be good. I'm not going to give it any extra sharpening because I don't want to over sharpen it. And the other thing I want to do is if I hover over here, you can say it's, see it's getting the bee in the flower here. But I checked this out before I started making the video. And I don't like what it's doing to this wing here. So I'm going to shut the uh, subject only off. Now, if there was brush masking here, I could go ahead and fix that with a little bit of a brush mask. And it's only going to affect the sharpening, which is a good thing. But we don't have it yet, but I'm sure that is coming. But there you go. And now let's take a look. Here is the before. I'm just left clicking with my mouse. Here's the before. And now here is the after. Let me go ahead and zoom in closer so we can take a better look. Okay, give it a second or two to update here. No, I always like to left click and hold with my mouse to see the before and release the mouse left click and here's the after or there's a little eye down here you can click this and keep the filters off so there's before and here's after and then we can uh do a uh, side by side view or we can have this like i'll call it a split screen where we can drag uh the slider across here and see the before and after that way whichever way you like it but i like the left click of the mouse and now I'm ready to save this image and I'll show you how I get it back into Lightroom. And it's really easy to do. We'll notice we have a 12% increase of our image. So I'm going to click on Save Image. And then we have these options here. I like the prefix of Photo AI and I'm going to put it back in the original folder. And you have choices here on Format. You can preserve the input format. I'm just going to leave it on DNG. That'll keep it in the raw format here and click Save. And I'm not going to make you wait through this. And I've showed this in other videos how long it takes, but I'll meet you back in Lightroom. Here we are back in Lightroom and I have the original DNG with no adjustments on it. Now to get that photo AI DNG into here, it's very simple. You just need to go to the folder, which is right here. Because remember, I saved it to the source folder. But if you don't see the folder showing up, just right click on the image and click right here. Go to folder and library and that'll come right up for you. Here's all you have to do. I think this is the same in Windows. If it's not, let me know in the comment section below. But I'm just gonna right click on here and there's a handy little tool in here and that is called Synchronize Folder. Click that. And when you do, it'll let you know. Uh, import new photos, there's one. Just click Synchronize and in a second or two, it'll be imported into here. Now it's gonna be by itself and you'll see it appearing right here. There it is right there, okay? Now what I can do is right click on this and then go to folder and library again. And now it will be sitting right next to the other image. It's to the right of the original DNG. So I'm gonna select both of these by command or control clicking on the original DNG. And let's go into XY comparison. We'll see here, now there is an issue here. There is a color shifting and brightness issue here. The image on the left is a photo AI DNG. And when I come up here, you can see the image on the right, which is the original DNG has noise and there's no noise over here. But you'll notice the color is shifted here. Now I'll download that PDF notes because I go over all this kind of stuff and I have my observations on there. And I go into great detail to show you some of the good and the bad of uh, the new update. You may want to check that out. It's interesting reading. It's, it's only like a three-page PDF with illustrations in it. I'm going to zoom in to 100%, but you can see the B in the left looks fantastic. There's no noise in the image whatsoever. They still haven't brought uh, noise recovery into Photo AI yet, but I'm expecting that to be coming in the future. 
I'll get out of this XY comparison mode. You just click here in Lightroom. I want to make sure I'm on the Photo AI image. Yeah, it's this one right here. And you'll notice if I go to develop, I have all of my lens profiles here. I still don't work with Photo AI with RAW files because of the color shifting issue. To me, it is not worth it. And I get fantastic results working with uh, sending TIFF files into Photo AI. No color shifting whatsoever. And I recommend that for all of you out there that are having color shifting issues. Let me know if you're having those type of issues in the comments section. I'd really like to know. Well, there it is, everyone. Topaz Photo AI, new update version 0.8, now with raw adjustments. I really like the way Topaz is going with this product. I just don't know if it's going to be ready for release time. Let me know what you think. And don't forget, download those PDF notes because I have final thoughts in there, which I really lay my heart out on those thoughts. If you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, as always, happy editing.